If the mad, bad and dangerous to know Emperor Nero is famous for one thing, it's being the emperor who fiddled while Rome burnt. The image of him performing with glee as the imperial capital burnt down around him has entered our lexicon as a metaphor for gross incompetence and the inversion of priorities in the middle of a crisis. The crisis in question was the Great Fire of Rome of 64 AD. Breaking out in the shops around the Circus Maximus, the fire raged for around nine days, destroying two-thirds of the imperial capital. It was by no means the only fire to devastate the city. Rome's wooden architecture and population's close confinement sparked numerous incendiaries that tore through the capital over the years. But the Great Fire is notorious for one reason. Many believed it was the emperor himself who had started it. We have three ancient sources for Nero's involvement in the Great Fire. They are Suetonius, Tacitus, and Cassius Dio. Our first author, Suetonius, was an imperial courtier and librarian who wrote his biographies of the first 12 emperors in the 110s and 120s, around 50 years after Nero's reign. Suetonius' largely sensationalist account describes how, as if upset by the ugliness of Rome's architecture and its narrow winding streets, Nero ordered the city to be set ablaze. Watching on from the Tower of Mycenas, which is today the Torre della Milizia, overlooking the Roman Forum, and dressed up, as he often was, in stage costume, Nero warbled his way through the song The Fall of Troy, a popular musical throwback to another fire-consumed ancient city. Our second source, Tacitus, is less sure about Nero's involvement. He expresses some doubt as to whether Nero himself had arranged for the fire. Some suggested he had, Tacitus muses, others put it down to divine providence. Tacitus does, however, tell us that Nero was far away from Rome, in the coastal town of Antium, when the conflagration broke out, and that he only returned to the capital when the fire threatened a palace he had built between the Tower of Mycenas and the Palatine Hill. Tacitus further credits Nero with helping out Rome's traumatised citizens, many of whom were said to have committed suicide upon realising they had lost everything to the flames. While some wandered Rome's streets, either fanning the flames or looting, Tacitus tells us that Nero did his best to help those most in need, throwing open his private gardens to house the homeless and reducing the corn price to help the poor. Tacitus does tell us of a rumour that went around about Nero singing The Fall of Troy, but he is adamant that it was just that, a rumour. Our third source, Cassius Dio, is of comparatively little help. Writing around 150 years after the Great Fire of Rome, he seems to have based his history on Suetonius' biography, as he reports Nero's complicity in the fire as concrete facts rather than opinion. But if the disagreement among our sources isn't enough to debunk the myth that Nero fiddled while Rome burnt, there is one detail that does. The fiddle wasn't invented until around the 11th century, so if Nero did accompany himself to the fall of Troy, it would have had to be with the guitarra. So where did the story come from? In most likelihood, the accusation that Nero burnt down vast swathes of the imperial capital was made retrospectively by the emperor's political enemies and imperial successors. The image of Nero fiddling while Rome burnt and reveling in the destruction is just too far-fetched to fathom. It renders Nero a caricature of his worst characteristics, the all-singing, all-dancing performer who's more interested in matters of the stage and being accepted as an artist than in traditional Roman values of militarism and modesty. It's hard to get across just how shocking it would have been to see Rome's emperor playing the fiddle or performing on stage. Try to imagine Queen Elizabeth II pole dancing, and you get something of the idea. Nero's behaviour in the wake of the disaster certainly didn't help to fan the rumour's flames. The emperor used the land cleared by the conflagration as the site for his Domus Aurea, or Golden Palace, an almost indescribably luxurious palace, woodland and an artificial lake spanning much of the Oppian Hill beside the Colosseum. Only a fraction of the Domus Aurea survives, though you can visit it on a remarkable experience which combines virtual reality and a guided tour to bring the palace to life. More often visited is the structure which Nero's Flavian successors built on the site of his golden palace, the Flavian Amphitheatre, which we now know as the Colosseum. 